to what happens with gymnasts does the better job on a particular event. And our first event for the men's competition is the floor exercise. In these single elimination championships, it will be Phil Cahoy against Matt Arnott. And our first competitor on the floor is Phil Cahoy. Leandra, Phil has been on the national team now since 1978. Of course, he's also a member of the 1980 Olympic team. Senior at the University of Nebraska, has been on three NCAA championship teams. Be preparing for his mount. Round off flip-flop. High pike double back. Good landing. Very nice. Into the corner, moving down the diagonal, front step out, round off, a four and a half twist to a front step out. Very interesting. I think Phil is the only person I know that does that skill. Handspring, full twist dive roll, little transition, turn out roll, lower to a split, showing flexibility, little change pace in the exercise. Now pressing up to a V-sit and presses right through to a press handstand. Good flexibility, good dynamics on that skill. Back into the corner, preparing for his dismount. This is actually his fourth pass. Round off, flip flop. Tuck double back. Good job, Phil Cahoy. Good landing, good difficulty, great exercise, Leandro. He has to be pleased with that. Five foot 11, rather long for a gymnast, but looks so good on the floor exercise. And he's going to go talk to his coach. Let's see if we can eavesdrop and see what his coach, Francis Allen, says to him. He's crazy in the morning, folks. He's crazy. I'm rooming with you. His coach is in the second row. Do you call you Mary Breast? No. <laughs> He's crazy in the morning. Phil Cahoy. <laughs> okay, Leander. Round off. Flip flop. High. Tuck. Double back. Pulling the legs around. Holding him in tight. Looking for the ground. Putting him down underneath. One step forward. But a great dismount. Phil has really upgraded his floor exercise routine. Good difficulty. I think Coach Allen was referring to the early rise that they had for. Uh, for warm-ups and workouts. 9.6 the score for Crazy Morning Phil Cahoy, and now we're ready for Matt Arnott. Matt from the University of New Mexico, coached by former Olympian Rusty Mitchell. A real up-and-comer. He's been doing a great job these past couple of years in New Mexico and nationally. Oh, very interesting. Half-in double front out or an Arabian double front. Back into the corner. Round off flip flop. Arabian one and three pike position. Very nice. Difficult. Did it very smoothly. Moving into a scale, which shows balance and hold. Combination requirements for floor exercise. Full twisting dive roll. Jump. Punch front one and a quarter somersault to a prone. Now into a split position, showing flexibility. You have to show suppleness and flexibility in the exercise, as well as a press handstand, as Matt just did there. Moving right along, he's doing a good job, Leandra. Round off, flip flop. Double twisting back somersault. Good exercise for Matt Arnott. Good start. I don't know if he quite had the difficulty that Phil did, but at the same time, he had adequate difficulty and was very smooth, and you're going to see a good score for his first event. Matt Arnott is 20 years old. He's 5'4", wants to be an accountant, and really maintained his composure. Let's take a look at his final tumbling pass. Round off, flip-flop, and a double twisting back somersault. That's two turns around the body line. Looking for the landing, good high landing, good finish. Matt Arnott. And while Matt waits for his score, he knew he had his work cut out for him when he had drawn Phil Cahoy in this first round of single elimination competition. Uh, he has to be happy with his performance. They're flashing the score now. Not bad at all. 9.5. He only trails now by one-tenth of one point after one event. So we have a fine start in the men's competition here, the single elimination championships. Women still have yet to get started. And of course, the men have five events to go. So stay with us here in Reno, Nevada. Jump, Leandra. Sukahara layout, pulls her pike around, 
Jennings looks down for the ground. She's off to the side a little bit, step back, but a good jump for Julianne. She received a 9.2. Her first vault was an 8.8, .8, so this is the vault score that will count. Julianne Brumbaugh. Now Chris Montero, a higher seed in this competition. This is her first vault. Good hard run, push off. Pike Sukahara, a little bit low on the landing, a little step, but still a good vault and a good start. Her score, 9.05. Her second vault was a void, so this is the score that counts. 9.05, so Julianne Brumbaugh has the lead after one event in the women's competition. Now let's move to the Palma Horse, where it's still Matt Arnott against Phil Cahoy, and Matt Arnott trails by one-tenth of a point to this man, Phil Cahoy. Leandra, Phil's an excellent performer on the Palma Horse, and in fact, Phil has uh, been kind of a new breed of all-around man, and the fact that he excels in the Palma Horse event. Extreme amount of difficulty, a lot of single pommel work, behind the back work, moving from one end to the other. Look at the extension and the amplitude he has. Now in a straddle position or a flare position, breaking into a flare, back scissor, moving extremely well, powerful, dynamic, good amplitude, picking up the circles, travels to the end, and a good exercise by Phil Cahoy. Beautiful exercise, good difficulty, good amplitude. What else can you say? I think the performance truly said it all. It's interesting the composition difference that we have seen in the various Palma Horse routines throughout this, this single elimination competition. Okay, here's his scissor movements. Watch his hands. Look at the firmness of the grip. You don't just place your hands on the pommel. I mean, you grab and squeeze those pommels. Good amplitude, high leg lift. Look at the extension and look at the flexibility he has to show. Pushing out in the hips, trying to get as far away from the horse as he can. Picks up, good extension on his circles. Single pommel Russian right to the end. And a good high loop flare off. Phil Cahoy, super pommel horse. And as he unwraps the tape from his hand, we'll take a look at his score, 9.65. After that is 9.6, he received on full exercise, and he's got quite an all-around total starter. This is Matt Arnott, ready to do his pommel horse routine. Remember, he trails now by one-tenth of a point. This is the event that usually separates the men from the boys, so to speak, and Matt is really improving on the pommel horse. Two pommel circles, travels to the middle. Bailey all the way out to the end, back to the end. The back, more to the end, breaks in. Nice flare. Reverse scissors. Front scissors. Picks back up in his circles. Travels to the end without the pommels. Hop on the end. Loop. Loop with a half. Good exercise for Matt or not. Leandra, his pommel horse is really coming along. He has greatly improved that event. So Matt Arnott, you could see a little difference in some of the uh, leg work and the scissors work, rather, the amplitude a little bit, com as compared with Phil Cahoy. In fact, I guess we're going to show that to you right now. Cahoy scissors moves as opposed to Matt Arnott. Okay, look at the amplitude. Good extension by Phil. High legs. Watch him pick the leg up really high, well over his head, as he brings in the scissors. Nice high leg. Another high leg. Good extension. Good hip thrust. Very nice by Phil Cahoy, a big, powerful performer on the pommel horse. Let's look at the comparison on Matt. There's a back scissor coming in. Good leg lift, good leg lift there. Not quite as high as Phil Cahoy, but at the same time, he hasn't been around as long as Phil has, and I'm sure you're going to see a big change in Matt in the near future. Watch the endings. Uh, gymnastically, gymnastically, I'd say Matt Arnott has more of a gymnast body. As we see a score now, it is 9.3 for Matt Arnott for the pommel horse competition versus 9.65 for Phil Cahoy. Uh, I think uh, Arnott has more of a compact body instead of a long, lanky body. I, I think that's it's probably uh, the type of body that is more customarily seen in gymnastics. But at the same time, gee, you can't take anything away from Phil Cahoy. I think a, a few years ago it would have been said that maybe Phil didn't have what uh, everyone expected a, a gymnast body to be, but he's got everything. Okay, and then even parallel bars, let's go over our scoring criterion. Okay, of course, risk, originality, and virtuosity. These are the basic components of every exercise. You have to move from bar to bar. There's bar changes, grip changes that take place. At the same time, the type of movements that are done, like the release and regrass moves, are becoming very dominant and very prevalent in the exercises. Also, 
kipping movements, circling movements, these are stalders and free hips, casting movements, moving from one bar to the other, and handstands on both bars. At the same time, we're also seeing new movements with somersaults between the bars and, of course, somersaulting dismounts. I remember when that used to be just movement between the bars, and now it's somersaults between the bars. Okay, this is Chris Montera against Julianne Brumbaugh. Chris Montera trails at this point by point .15. And Julian Brumbo, who you see in the chalk bucket right there, or I should say in the water pump, you just have to get the right combination of chalk and moisture on your hands to do a bar routine, and it's kind of a personal decision how you want to handle that. It, it's uh, kind of funny, too, because the purpose of the chalk is to keep your hands dry, and then after they put the chalk on, then they spray water on. <laughs> well, it's got to be just right. I, I can relate to that. <laughs> You're not comfortable unless things are just right, and Julian Brumbo has been given the green flag by our head judge and is ready to mount. Julianne's a very good performer on the uneven bars. And see here with a stalder shoot, toe on, shoot to the top bar with a half turn, front hip circle, and there's a regular stalder hop. And a back stalder with a front flip, very nice, very interesting, kind of a unique skill. Long hang kip, front hip circle, cast right to a handstand. Giant swing, very nice, toe on, Front off with a half, good exercise, and Brumbaugh, super set. Not just a super set, let me add something to this. There was another young lady who was supposed to be in this competition. Her name, Tanya Service. She unfortunately injured herself during the warm-up competition, and Julianne was called in with just like 24 hours notice. Come here, you're going to do this. So let's take another look at Julianne Brumbaugh, the short notice fill-in okay. in this competition. Here's her release front somersault very similar to what you see the boys doing on the horizontal bar moving dropping to the low bar half turn and picking up here looking there's a nice giant swing right up to the handstand good straight arms puts her feet on the bar pushes off good high front somersault with a half turn and a great landing boy she's excited about that one She's happy, but I think uh, she might have had a small rip in her hand, which is why she was fussing with the water and the chalk so much. She seems concerned about it, and I think they were hurting her a little bit. And I think she's happy that she didn't peel away, especially in some of her somersault moves. It's amazing. She walks near that bar, and the bar's over her head. <laughs> yeah, right. 9.4, the score for Julianne Brumba. And again, pressure now on Chris Montero. There she is, getting ready to do her uneven parallel bar routine. She adjusts the board, which is perfectly legal for the mounts now in women's gymnastics. The rails have already been set, and she's ready for her performance. Here's Chris's mount. Jumps over the low bar with a straddle. Tips up to the high bar, front hip circle, cast up the handstand. Toe on, toe off to a handstand. Whip, it's called a Christ care. Kip catch to the top bar. Kip up. Put your feet on the bar, shoot out with eagle grip, and a front flip release. Very nice. Pushes away another hip, catch the top bar. Whoops, got a hips away from the bar a little bit, caused her a little hesitation there. Front hip circle, cast up, and a problem. Yeah, it's hard to pull a handstand out of a still position, which is what she had to do. She had to cast right up to a handstand. She didn't have the, the luxury of the swinging move into it. This is very difficult all right now, Leandra, because she's got to regain her composure. Think about what she's doing. Front hip circle, cast up, toe on. Comb in each dismount over the low bar. It's kind of a half back over the low bar. And it's too bad she had that problem because that's going to substantially hurt her score. Uh, she'll be penalized half a point for the fall, and she'll have an extra swing in there. That definitely will hurt her score. And the dismount, which is much more difficult when you add the peril of the low bar in there, we're seeing a lot of Comaniches, but uh, that just not was tough. Let's take another look. Okay, here was here was her front somersault. Good reef grass, drop down to the low bar, very nice. Kips up, looks like her hips got away from the bar on that one too a little bit. I don't know if she meant to do that second hip. Okay, now she kips up to the top bar. Let's see what happened here. She does a front hip circle. Cast up, she didn't quite have the momentum to get up to the top and she had to jump down. So consequently, with that interruption, that substantially hurts her score. And her score after the uneven parallel bars is now 8.6, add to that her 9.05, and she's behind Julianne Brumbaugh by quite a bit. We'll be back with more men's and women's competition in the earlier.
Well, my plan is to stay at the University of Nebraska. Uh, I should graduate by the end of the summer, so I'll take most of all the next year off from school and just mainly concentrate on training in the gym, maybe getting to the gym a couple times a day. And you see Phil Cahoy is chalking up now to do his still ring performance. He has a .45 lead as he takes his mount. Francis Allen, the head coach at Nebraska, helping him on the rings. Okay, here's Phil's mount. He does a locate, shoot up straight arms to a handstand. There's a back giant done very nicely. Straight arms back to a handstand. Bails out. A very nice bail to a front uprise to a V position. There's a whip it right to an L. Very difficult to hold your legs up when you do that skill. Lots of concentration on Phil's part. Good press to handstand. Be preparing for dismount, bail. Giant dislocate. Nice high, full twisting double back and a good landing. Good job for Phil Cahoy. His rings are really improved, Leandra. See, Francis Allen is going over to Phil. See if he says anything to him. No, he is not. What can he say? The routine was very, very good. Although Phil isn't exactly smiling in all cheers, I guess when you're a veteran of solid performances, you don't get as thrilled about the about the solid performances again. Let's take another look at his routine. Okay, it's an L position. He's now going to be fulfilling one of his requirements, which is a press to a handstand with arms straight up to a handstand position. He'll be preparing for his dismount. He should not be on the straps. He was off, touched him a little bit, giant dislocate. And there's a full twisting double back somersault looking for the ground. Pretty good landing, one step back and a good finish. Phil Cahoy. I think it was 1964 Olympic team. Although he doesn't look Phil Cahoy is uh, removing his straps while we wait for his score, which is 9.25. And no response from Phil about that as we look at Matt Arnott getting ready to do his performance. 9.25. Are you impressed with that score? Thought it was low, about right? It's a, it's a good score for Phil. Um, it wasn't his best exercise. But at the same time, it was uh, had all the requirements. He did it very well, good dismount. And um, that's uh, about where Phil normally is, between 9-2 and 9-4. And Rusty Mitchell, the coach of Matt not helping him up on the rings. Not very nice started. straight arm shoot to handstand by Matt for a mount. Very nice back giant. Very nice one again, just beautiful. Locked arms, extremely difficult. L cross, showing strength, and he pulls up from the L. Now that's interesting because it doesn't look like he's that strong, but he sure is. Here's his press to handstand, fulfilling his last handstand requirement. Getting ready for his dismount, fails, high dislocate, and a full twisting double back, stuck. Good job, Matt not. Great exercise, Leandra. Good difficulty, beautiful swing movement, and a, just a gorgeous dismount. Great landing, and, I and think it's always Rusty, impressive. I think Rusty and Matt are both very happy with that performance. He's, uh, he's got to be pleased. Okay, let's watch these giants, just like on the high bar. Straight arms right back up to the handstand. Hardly any movement in the rings at all. Right up to the handstand, very nice. Extremely difficult, and he just did them beautifully. Here's the dismount, high dislocate, just like on the high bar, preparing for full twist and a back out, looking for the ground, and stands right up, beautiful dismount, Matt or not. And his score for that performance is a nine point, I can't see the flash, 9.60, so Matt Arnott now only trails by five hundredths of a point in the all-around totals against Phil Cahoy. So 9.6, Matt Arnott taking the ring event in the single elimination competition. We'll be back with more gymnastics here in Reno. Don't go away. Was the uneven parallel bars? Montero having a rough go there, 8.6 to 9.4. Our total, 17.65 to 18.60, 0.95 the difference after two events. On the men's side, they have completed three events, so they too are halfway through the competition. Matt Arnott, 9.5 to 9.6 on the floor exercise competition for Phil Cahoy. Our next event for the men was the Palma Horse, 9.3 to 9.65 for Phil Cahoy. And it was comeback time on the rings where it was 9-6 for Matt Arnott, 9-2-5 for Phil Cahoy. Our totals, you can see them, the difference, point one. So we have some close competition. Let's see if Chris Montero can make a comeback, but right now let's go to men's vaulting where Matt Arnott 
is ready to execute his first ball and only ball. Okay, Leandro, here comes Matt. He's a good balder, very powerful, hard run, good push, good vault, nice tough Matt double run. And this is an area that maybe Matt can pick up again a couple of tenths on Phil. Uh, but at the same time, Let's Phil's go. a very good balder too. But uh, we'll see here. I, I, I would have to give the edge even before Phil jumps to Matt. Good concentration. He's looking at that board as he's coming down, watching the board. When you take off on your hurdle, then your eyes move to the horse. Watch his push. Good hard push up. A good top. Nice form. Good spin. Looking for the landing. Kicks out in front. Stands right up. One step in front. And a good ball for Matt Arnott. He's really proving Four. to be a tough Matt competitor. He didn't take this competition Next lightly. Up. So Phil Colloy has his hands full. He has just acknowledged the head judge's signal that he may go ahead while we wait for the score. Okay, here's Phil's jump. Good hard run, good concentration, push. And a Sukahara full twist, very nice. Phil All right, good jump for Phil. While we are going to take another look at Phil Cahoy's vault, let me remind you, we have the score now for Matt Arnott. It was 9.4. Phil Cahoy's full twisting Sukahara will have to better a 9.40. Let's take a look here. Good hard run. Pushes off, in the pike position, good lift, right down the center, looking for the mat, puts his feet underneath him, stands up good and quick. Once again, Phil's amazing. And so is the score that he gets on every, one that, every event that he does, all of them in the nines. This one, no exception, 9.6 for Phil Cahoy on the vault. So he has again increased his margin over Matt Arnott. Let's go to the women's competition, the balance beam. Julianne Brumbaugh is up there warming up. She is going against Chris Montero. And the pressure, which I would have thought was on her in the beginning, coming here on such short notice, going up against Montero, has really been removed. She's been a calm, steady little competitor. Let's take a look at the criterion for the balance beam, what the judges are looking for. Okay, Leandra, of course, dance, gymnastics, and tumbling moves. These are predominantly the things you see in the balance beam. Aerial combinations, Once things that have really become prevalent in balance beam uh, exercises over the recent five, years. Eight, all eight, kinds of different eight, somersaults. Eight, eight, you always have to have continuous movement with three accentuated eight, poses. Eight, eight, no eight, stops eight, or hesitations, eight, otherwise there's eight, deductions. Eight, eight, Artistic expression, eight, very important. Eight, the way that the girl eight, goes through eight, the dance eight, and ballet eight, moves eight, and how she shows eight, her eight, poise. Eight, good balance. Without good balance, you're on the ground. And this is Chris Montero getting ready to mount. She's on the comeback trail here. If she's to stay alive, she's got to have a good beam routine. She's down by almost a full point. Chris is mounting with a press to a handstand here. It's interesting to note, again, that the balance beam is less than four inches wide. It's four feet off the ground and about 16 feet long. Two I don't back know. handsprings, and you could tell that uh, she was a little bit in trouble. Once that center of gravity moves off of the line of the beam, you're on the ground. Believe me, when you're up there, it's a lot higher than four feet. Showing a split position. The deduction for the fall is about half a point. There's a full turn, full and a quarter turn to a side position. Back looking down the length of the beam, preparing for a gainer back somersault. One foot landing, very nice. Difficult part, and she did very well, a split leap. Chris shows good poise, good balletic expression. Jump to a front walkover. A little bit of a bobble, but saved it. Back on top. Good fluid movement to her exercise. Showing a nice scale position. Good flexibility. Back walkover. Swing through. And there's a Valdez, or kind of a back walkover from a sitting position. Moving to the end of the beam now. Preparing for dismount, round off, and a full twisting back center. Back. Pretty good exercise, Leandra. Of course, that fall at this stage of the game really hurts because she's already in the third event. She's got a deficit to pick up on Julianne, and the fall puts her a little bit farther behind. Okay, let's take a look here. Here's a back handspring. You can see that she's off to the side. Her 
left foot was really off. Now you see she didn't quite have the momentum, and there was no way she was going to get back on. I That's was, too bad. I was surprised she went for it, and she really picked up nice and low at the end, and a nice strong finish. Yes, round off, full twist, a little bit low, but stands right up. Good ending. She really came back well. A lot of gymnasts, after they have a flustering start like she had, usually blow the whole routine, but she really had a fine finish. I hope the judges keep that in mind when they give her a score. It's unfortunate she had such a shaky start. Eight points. Score Liz Montero, eight points six. And we were hearing a little bit of her coach. And the continued competition, next, Julianne Brumbaugh. Who is now watching Julianne Brumbaugh. I'm not saying anything to Chris, but Julianne's ready to do her team routine. Julianne pushes up to a headstand and then a little spin. The half turn, back extension. And there's a gainer back somersault and saves it. She's a little bit off, but she got back on. You know, Leandra, you've got to kind of wonder if it is an advantage for Julianne. She has a little bit more room on the beam, perhaps, than some of the other girls do because she's a little bit smaller. But at the same time, it doesn't make any difference. The beam is still four inches wide and 16 feet long. She's got to do the same skills. She's four feet seven and 69 pounds. And a real dynamo. There's an aerial cartwheel. Nicely done. Moving with good rhythm. <laughs> a little cutesy. Is that an official gymnastics term, cutesy? It sure is. <laughs> In this case, it definitely is. Preparing for another tumbling pass. Back handspring. Julianne coached by... Dick and Linda Mulvihill, a couple of the premier coaches of the women's gymnasts in the United States. You should add well, that. Back handspring to a headstand position. Another cutesy. Her coach is Linda Matheny Mulvihill, for those of you that followed gymnastics in the late 60s and early 70s. An Olympian for the United States. Warning. She just got her warning to proceed for her dismount. Round off, double back. Land a little bit short. She had a little difficulty. The dismount will hurt her a little bit, Leandra, but she had a good exercise overall. I think you're going to see that she's going to get a good score. The gymnasts have to perform their balance beam within a certain time frame, and the warning comes five seconds before the final bell comes, which means you have to be finished. The judges are going to stop watching. A little <laughs> hip shake there. I kind of like that. I think that shows a lot of <laughs> the class. The official me. <laughs> you know, for a, a, just a youngster, she has an awful lot of poise, shows great expression, a very nice dancer, and it, it's not uh, surprising with uh, Linda being her coach, one of the, the real great choreographers in the United States. Back handspring move, smoothly into a little pose, moving down the length of the beam, good amplitude, good extension, moving again, the turn, coming back, a back handspring right to a headstand position. And her score was 8.8 .8 for Julianne Brumball, so she takes the beam competition by two tenths of a point over Chris Montera. So we take another look at her on the beam. We're going to have a commercial timeout here, and then we will be back with still more gymnastics as we watch Julianne Brumbau here in Reno, Nevada. Bars on the short end of that three-point difference. Here's Matt's parallel routine, half turn, straddle up, very similar to the mount that uh, was used by Kurt Thomas a few years ago. Handstand on one bar, turns in. That's called a stutz right to a handstand. A little step there. There's a Diamidoff or a full twisting movement to a handstand. Hop your wet. Back straddle. Straddle position. Pushes up to a handstand. There's a good exercise going so far. Another stutz to a handstand. Swing down. Good double back. A little bit under rotated. Come forward. Good exercise overall, Leandra. It's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, the... the um, hand positions are very important. You should, when you land in a handstand position or any position, you should not move your hands. And Matt took a couple of those steps with his hands. And of course, uh, you're deducted for that. Okay, Leslie Mitchell and Matt Arnott. Yeah, Matt Arnott wants to be alone for a few minutes. 
Take another look at his arrow. Take a look at this. He jumps with a half turn and straddles right to a straddle L position on one bar and presses up to a handstand on one bar, which is very difficult. You don't have a lot of adjustment uh, with those hands when you're on that one rail. Turns in in a handstand position, swings forward, does a half turn to a handstand, sees a little over-rotate, he's got to take a couple little steps, it'll cost him two tenths of a point, swings down, it's a full twisting, or what's called a diamond-off, front up rise. And there's his score, 9.1 for Matt Arnott on the parallel bars. He's maintained a plus nine average throughout this competition after five events. Right now, Phil Cavoy is also at above nine on all of his events. He's ready to mount. Phil Cahoy's worst Phil score came on the rings was a 9-2, but other than that, he's been averaging about 9-6 for every event. Leandra Phil is a uh, two-time NCAA parallel bar champion, so this is a great event for him. And he's the only person that I know that does this very unique mount. Very different like a back hip right up to a V-sit and presses through between his hands on one bar. Turns into a handstand, swings down. A Diamodoff with a half turn right back to a handstand. Stutz hand, backhand, great combination. Phil Cahoy. Cast front flip, swing up to a handstand. Good difficulty, very unique exercise. Really moving well. Stutz back up to a handstand. Layaway, high, powerful front up rise. And a Rudolph off for one and a half minutes. Oh, boy, that was nice. That was a great exercise. It's easy to see why he's an NCAA uh, parallel bar champion. Outstanding. Interesting connections and very difficult routine. Let's take another look. Okay, here's this little back hip movement. Turns around backwards right up to a V on one bar. Very interesting combination. Straddle presses on a one bar right to a and turns in now he's going to do a diameter off right on one bar it's a full turn but phil's not satisfied for that turns all the way in on the, the same bar with another half turn very interesting combination look at the dynamics and the power of this front uprise how he lifts way up good extension good power high one and a half twisting front somersault dismount feet right underneath good landing good exercise phil cahoy and his score for that performance, 9.6. And he deserved every tenth of that. Possibly even more. I think he looks a little disappointed in that. You know, it's interesting, Leandra. You know, Phil has kind of been in the shadow in some respects of Jim Hartung for a couple of years. Uh, Jim being the premier in Nebraska and won a couple of NCAA championships. And yet, here he is, 9.6s and 9.7s all over the place. And uh, sometimes he's forgotten. And you're watching Chris Montero walk out onto the floor exercise. She again challenges Julianne Rothoff in the women's floor exercise competition. Let's listen. Some very nice music. Expressive dance marks into the corner and first tumbling pass. Staying in tempo with the music. Very important, good music interpretation. Round off flip-flop, pike double back somersault, and she may have stepped out of the area a little bit, but still, good tumbling pass, good mount. Round up to a, just a high straddle jump. Good powerful music, round off and a radiant step out, round off flip-flop, full twisting back somersault. Nice pass. Her first two passes have fulfilled part of this tumbling requirement. And now a music tempo change. Very girls, modern. Yes. Yes. Girls have to show a change of pace or a change of tempo in the exercise. And this is Chris's change right here. Double twisting back somersaults, a little bit short, she was a little bit under rotated on that, but a good finish on it. Chris Montero, good exercise, Leander, good tumbling, good dance, nice music interpretation. Overall, fine job. And
Chris Montero being congratulated by her coach. Her dance, I would have to say, was the most impressive part of that. The music was rock, modern, and jazz, and she really stared the music well. Let's take another look. Yes, good expressiveness, good amplitude. Let's watch this tumbling pass. Good, hard, aggressive run, which is very important to build up that momentum. Round off, turns her around so she can go backwards now with a back handspring. Watch this lift, high push. Pull the legs in hard in a pike position, a double backward somersault in a pike position. And she made a little step there, but that's okay. Okay, here she is, coming back for her last pass, which is a double pull. It's round off, turns around, another back handspring, and two twists around the body line. You can see she didn't quite finish the twist, so she landed a little bit short on it. And her score for the floor exercise is 9.15. And of course, the deduction for stepping out of bounds was already subtracted. Now, Julianne Brumbaugh, who is ahead by 1.15 after three events, just has to hit a steady routine without any major flaws, and this single elimination round will be hers. For as young as she is, she is a very fine, poised performer already. I'll be interested to see her music. Linda, her coach, is a master of things like this. flip-flop and a pike double back somersault very nice julianne nice light lively music which is very appropriate gives her a chance to express her personality front step out round off flip-flop full twisting back somersault pretty close to the line and now here's a change of pace a little tempo change <laughs> twist. Julian, Julian Brumbaugh, Brumbaugh. good and exercise, could be the winner. A little pixie, a little pixie type routine, really stayed with it well, and I think the crowd was very pleased with her performance, as well she should be. She went into this final event with a 1.15 lead, and let's take another look at some of those dance elements in her routine. Okay, this is uh, what she does so well. Even She's smiling even before she gets to the part. I'm sure she likes this part because it gives her a chance to do something that eh, nobody else does in their exercise. Kind of bouncy, light, lively, shows good expression. Very nice. Okay, she's preparing for her last tumbling pass, which is a double twisting back somersault. She kind of cast it back a little bit, didn't quite get as much elevation as she needs, but she still did the skill fine. Double twisting back somersault, puts on her feet, good finish, and preparing for the very end of her exercise. So Julian Brumbaugh was congratulated by Chris Montero. As soon as we see the score, it'll become official. I believe that is the official score, 9.15. Julian Brumbaugh and Chris Montero tying on the floor exercise competition. We'll be back with more of the men's competition, and we'll wrap against Phil Cahoy. 0.8, 8 tenths of one point separates Arnott from Cahoy. Let's see how he does on the high bar. This is going to be a really exciting event, Leandra. Let's watch Matt here. High cast. Back up rise, almost to a handstand, a stalder, grip change, stalder the other way, one arm giant swing, try to a cross arm giant, toe on toe off, back to a regular giant, comes in, regular stalder, rolls right into an eagle giant, good strength there by Matt, pushes it out, hop out, half turn, accelerates those giant swings, full twisting double back. Good dismount, good exercise for Matt Arnott. You know, it's too bad, it's, it's still possible Phil could win this, obviously, but Matt just did a great job in every exercise today. He really had a solid day. His worst score was 9-3, and that was on Palma Horse, and his best was a 9-6 on ring, so his, his average is way up there. Well, that's kind of the nature of our men's program. Uh, we've got uh, tremendous depth in our men's program, and it uh, just goes to show uh, 
that uh, Matt is, of course, going to be coming a long way, up and coming. And uh, let's watch here. Here's an Eagle Giant. Pops out with a half turn, preparing for his dismount. Good acceleration on his giant swing, and this is a double somersault with a full twist. There's his first somersault, full twist. Second somersault, looking for the ground. Puts it right on his feet, good landing. Great routine by Matt Arnott. I'm ready to flash the score, and it is a 9.5. Five, on 9.55. Okay, let's take a look at, uh, Leandra, look at Phil's grips. And uh, the grip has become a very integral part of the horizontal bar simply because it's, uh, it now has a dowel in it. It's a little wooden piece that helps the athlete hold on to the bar with the new skills that they're doing, and in particular one-arm swing movements. Uh, this grip becomes a very important part of their equipment. A few years ago, this was not, the skills were not possible because uh, these grips weren't used. Phil Cahoy has to score at least an 8.75 if he's to tie Matt Arnott for the all-around. And Leandra, Phil's an expert at this event. Many-time national champion. Stem Stalder, watch this one-arm movement. Just beautiful. Full twisting one-arm giant swing. Back to another Stalder. Here he comes in and stoops in high, extended, inverted giant swings. And watch this, a high front flip right out of the inverted giant swings. Back to another Stalder. He's just a master at this event. And he doesn't stop yet. Another Stalder shoot, preparing for the dismount. Good extension, good amplitude. And here it is, full twisting double back, stuck. Phil Cahoy, what a way to end a routine. What a way to end this performance. I think he got the 8.75 that, uh, <laughs> that he needed. So Phil Cahoy on the high bar, showing another solid performance. His best score, 9.65 so far. That came on the pommel horse. His worst, 9.25 on the ring. Take okay. another look at his high bar. Let's watch this. There's one arm. He goes all the way around the bar with a full turn on one arm. Comes through with a stalder. Look at those grips. The amount of pressure that he exerts when he's doing these skills stoops through. Look at the bar move at the same time. Here's the inverted giant swing position. Okay, here it is. Comes around and the inverted kicks out. Look at the foot tap, high lift, releases the bar into a front flip, reaches for the bar. Beautiful regrass. Phil Cahoy, dynamite performer, coming through ready for his dismount. Releases the bar, full twisting double back, and watch this. There he is, stuck landing. Great routine, great day for Bill Cahoy. 8.75 was what he needed, 9.75 is what he got. That is the highest score he has received. And needless to say, unless our tabulations are wrong, he is the winner. We'll be back to rehash all of the scores and recap all of the actions you've seen in this competition. So stay with us. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. To 8.8, again Brumbaugh takes the event. And on the floor exercise, once again, it was Brumbaugh, 9.05 to 9.15. Our all-around totals for Chris Montera, 35.30. Julianne Brumbaugh, a winner by 1.25. Her total, 36.55. She is the winner in this round of elimination. On the men's side. Individually, Matt Arnott on the Florex 9.5 to Phil Cahoy's 9.6. On the pommel horse, it was 9.3 to 9.65, Phil Cahoy taking it. Then Mark, Matt Arnott won on the ring competition, it was 9.6 to 9.25, but Cahoy came right back, 9.6 to 9.4. On the parallel bars, it was Cahoy again, 9.6 to 9.1. And again on the high bar, Phil Cahoy astounding 9.75 to Arnott's very good 9.55. Our totals 56.45 for Arnott and 57.45 for Phil Cahoy. The difference there, one point. And tell me, Mike Jackie, were you surprised at all in any of the scores, particularly in the men's competition? No, not at all. Of course, it's a shame that Matt Arnott had such a fine day, but Phil, once again, came out the winner, as expected. In the women's competition, Chris had a little bit of trouble on uh, the balance beam and a little bit of trouble on the vault. Julianne was just consistent all the way through and deserved the championship. All right, these gymnasts have to come back and compete yet another time. Is that going to be more difficult now that they've gone through all the routines again? Is it more fatiguing or is it more relaxing? I don't really think so. It's probably their advantage getting into the second round. They'll be a little bit more relaxed and they'll probably perform even better. All right, so there's more single elimination competition coming up on ESPN. Be sure to check your cable guide. From Mike Jackie, I'm Leander Riley saying so long from Reno, Nevada. Oh, oh, oh.